and just came to a temple. It's called the Annamalaya Temple in Nirkar. So I thought I'll start the review with the temple. So for the last one week, I've been uh, shooting both with the R5 and R6. And for the last two days in Coimbatore, we are shooting a wedding of one of our friends, Kopi, with the R6, essentially stills photography, but with flash portraits, everything that happens in a wedding. And today I have been shooting with the R6, doing some videos and stuff like that. Even before that, in, at home I did all the lab tests, but don't worry, I am not going to bore you with the lab tests. For me, when I review a camera, my intent is how to use the camera and make some creative pictures and films with that. Of course, if there are any limitations or if there is anything good, I am going to talk about that too. So right now we are rec recording with the R6 and I have the R5 in my hands. Let me start with the first impressions what I got when I saw the camera, even before switching on the camera I mean. Both the R5 and R6 were re really weightless cameras, somewhere around 700 grams, I, you can refer to the specifications. So despite being very small cameras, it was really comfortable to hold in hands. All the fingers were going inside the deep grip. I have a medium sized hands, I am very sure even if you have a large hand, you will be able to happily hold it. The best thing is what happened yesterday and day before while shooting wedding. So for 4-5 hours, I continuously held the camera and I was shooting the wedding. So I was using all types of lenses including this 15-35 which is a little bit of a heavy lens and other lightweight STM lenses. So after 5 hours, usually I feel some kind of soreness, some kind of pain, uncomfortness and things like that. So the advantage with a small camera especially for a wedding photographer is like it keeps you comfortable even after the shoot. So having a weightless camera like the R5 and R6 means a lot to me as a wedding photographer. And the camera really looks good and the major difference between the R5 and R6 is like you don't have a mode dial on R5 instead you have the mode button. So that is super cool because you get a top LCD panel where you can check all the settings in one glance. In R6, it's a mode dial. That's cool as well. I didn't find a major issue with that. But still, I like the top LCD panel on the R5. So this is the major difference you find externally. When it comes to specs, yeah, you know, R5 is a 45 megapixel camera and R6 is a 20 megapixel camera. But uh, beyond the megapixels, which is used for stills, the major difference between R5 and R6 comes in the video specs. So R5 can shoot 8K in RAW up to 30P. 4K it can do up to 120p and 1080 it can do up to 120p all in 10 bit 422 in H.264 and 265 and when it comes to 8K it can do RAW as well. When it comes to uh, R6 there is a small difference. So it cannot do 8K, it cannot do 4K 120p but all other resolutions and frame rates it can do in 10 bit 422 but no RAW and things like that and when it comes to recording it is only IPB. In R5, all resolutions can be done in both all I, IPB and IPB light. So R6 also has the IPB light when you uh, are shooting uh, long form vid videos and things like that where you have lot of things to shoot and smaller memory card sizes, then you can go for the lighter versions. Here situation, I am standing in broad daylight about 15 pm here in air card so i have a stream flowing before me and i need to i want a slow motion footage of it so i'm going to shoot at uh, 1080 100p so i have a screen and i'm standing on some rocks so i don't really want to go to the viewfinder and then shoot i can do that but i'd like to use the lcd and when i set the lcd brightness to 7 it's very much visible and i'm able to roll the footage, clearly seeing the exposure, zebras and everything. And this means a lot to me because I'm a guy who is outdoors and keep filming outside in daylight. And having a bright viewfinder when it comes to R5 is extremely helpful. So when it comes to shooting in outdoors, it's not just about daylight and having a bright LCD or a viewfinder. It's also about weather sealing. The camera should be reasonably weather sealed against dust and splashes of water in case it happens like this. Okay, it should be resistant. I sure know that the R5 and the L-series lenses are reasonably weather sealed 
and it can withstand splashes of water. Even the R6, if not equal to R5, it is still weather sealed against splashes and dust. And the other thing is, we have a very bright contrast situation here, water against sunlight and rocks in shadows. So it is very difficult to manage the dynamic range if I'm going to shoot an 8-bit. So there comes the 10-bit 4 to 2 and the log. So let me take a footage of uh, this stream of water against bright sunlight and rocks in deep shadows with C log 3 profile and see how it grades. Zebra character ka. Okay. So when it comes to photography or filmmaking, what is finally deliverable to the client is actually the image. And I think it's extremely important for a camera to have a good image quality and color science. So in the last uh, couple of weeks, while I'm testing this camera, be it stills, be it motion picture, the color science was out of the world amazing. So what I mean by color science is, I mean, every camera is going to give colors, but there are a very few ca cameras which gives a pleasant skin tone. So Canon is known for it and it proved it again and it is probably more improved than the previous generation of cameras like the 5D Mark IV and even the Evo SR. So I was really impressed with the image quality. When it comes to the log profiles, both the R6 and the R5 have C-Log as well as C-Log 3. I really like the C-Log 3 because it is protected on both ends. They make sure shadows don't reach the noise floor and the highlights are also well protected. The dynamic range may not be as high as C-Log2, but it is satisfactory for a lot of uses like documentary filmmaking, wedding filmmaking, etc. So the other thing I have to really mention about the, is the in-body stabilization. With a stabilized lens like this, it gives out up to eight stops of image stabilization. And otherwise also it gives up to 5.5 or six stops of stabilization according to my experience. And I think it is really great. For a 45 megapixel sensor, it means a lot to have stabilization because every hand is not rock steady. So there could be slight motion in the hand, which could create a blur in the pictures. So with this kind of stabilization, that is prevented. And when it comes to video, the stabilization even helps a little more. It helps you achieve smooth footage. And there's an op option to turn on the enhanced and digital stabilization on which makes it even further interesting. A lot of footage is motion pictures shot today with both the R5 and R6 during filming this review were shot with in-body stabilization and stabilization on the lens. So you can judge for yourself how good it was. So when it comes to R5, it's a 8K raw capable camera and when it comes to R6, it can shoot 4K up to 60p and 1080 in slow motion up to 120p, which is uh, in full frame. So that's a great spec. 
But then there, were, there are a lot of uh, misconceptions about this camera when it comes to shooting video is yes, the overheating. I started testing out these cameras in 1080, 4K and in 8K. In 1080, both R5 and R6 don't overheat in any Kodak, any frame rate. As a wedding filmmaker, for me, R6 is more than sufficient. I may not go to a R5 unless I am going to shoot the whole project in uh, 4K and I need 120p. R6 itself shoots 4K in 60p in full frame. Not exactly full frame, but a 1.1x crop, which is nothing. I did some experiments at home before doing this review. So when it comes to 4K 50p, both the cameras overheat around 25 to 30 minutes time. But after every 5 minutes of cooling, you get up to 10 to 20 minutes depending on the codec. So if you enable uh, HDR PQ or if you are shooting in HQ, then uh, there is a uh, faster overheating, otherwise there is not much. If you are a kind of person who is going to shoot more than 30 minutes, 1 hour at 4K 50p, then probably this is not the camera for you. And there is an upcoming R5C which is yet to be released in India. It comes with force cooling, so that could be a probable solution. When it comes to 4K 30p, there was not any overheating at all. Which HQ it overheated about in 45 minutes to 1 hour time. That again uh, uh, with 5 minutes cooling you get easily 15 to 20 minutes. When it comes to 8K RAW, I was able to roll up uh, 18 minutes before the camera overheated and shut down. The key is if you are uh, switching off the camera in between shots, you will be able to use the camera for a longer time before it overheats and shut down. In a mirrorless camera, I think this kind of specs. 10 bit having raw and everything in such a small form factor is a blessing. That kind of a blessing and that kind of a technology does come with limitations and it, it is up to us to understand the limitations and manage it. I seriously think I can happily use the R5 and R6 understanding its limitation both in wedding videos and any of my 4K personal projects. So while we are shooting this review, none of the cameras overheated anywhere. Yeah, we were shooting in 1080 and even when we are shooting in 4K in some segments, it didn't overheat at all. There are a couple of things to bear in mind when the R5 and R6 is used for video purposes. First is the limitation on the record time. So both the cameras have a limitation of 29 minutes and 59 seconds for recording footages up to 60p and when it comes to slow motion at 100 and 120p, the limitation is about 7 minutes and 29 seconds. So even if you are using it for a music video, I do not think it is going to be more than 5 minutes. So 7 minutes and 29 seconds is good enough for most purposes. So the other thing you have to bear in mind is audio is not recorded when you shoot the footage in 100p and 120p. So when it comes to media, the R6 uses dual SD cards of UHS 2 type. And when it comes to R5, it uses one SD card slot which is UHS2 and a CF Express Type B card. The heavy ones like the 8K RAW, the 4K 120 and all those things go only into the CF Express Type B card. The other footages can be happily recorded into a V60 or V90 SD card. If you want to uh, record 10 bit footages in H.265 with these two cameras, you have to either record in log which is C log or C log 3 or PQ HDR. In other standard profiles 10 bit 422 is not available. I wish Canon soon gives a cinema profile which can be used for most of people who feel difficulty with grading C log. I think that will help. If you have to shoot 10 bit 422, you have to either use C log, C log 3 or PQ HDR. But what prevents you from actually using C log 3? It is easily gradable. I have graded with my Premiere Pro. I did not go to DaVinci Resolve or any advanced software. Even with a software like Premiere or Final Cut, it is easily gradable. I think guys, you should try it. And it makes a lot of difference. I am telling you, get extra dynamic range. So 10 bit with log is a very good combination for expanding the dynamic range and using the dynamic range of the sensor. I think you guys should do that if you are buying these two cameras. So it's about 4.45 p.m. 
So I'm now driving to a location I've explored about one and a half years ago. So it's about 30 kilo kilometers from here, about an hour's drive. It's a beautiful location for shooting sunset. Maybe if you're lucky and it's not cloudy, we should be having a good time lapse there. So I'm going there fast. The dual pixel AF2 on these two cameras, the R5 and the R6 is phenomenal. I would say it, get, it gets anything in focus and it's easy to get anything in focus. So I was shooting a wedding, so I had kept predominantly in that uh, human face tracking mode. Uh, the thing is, it somehow seems to identify the face I need. So in a wedding, say I'm sh shooting a bride in 35mm along with other people, somehow it, it goes to the brightest face and it tracks automatically. And if you want uh, the groom's face, for example, in focus in the next shot, you can just uh, flick this uh, joystick and it automatically selects the next face. And when you're close enough, when you flick it, it goes from the left eye to the right eye. Let's track Brahma who has multiple heads. Let's see how eye autofocus works. Now I'm shifting the camera, record upwards. Yes, it has started tracking the eye of the left face of Brahma. So if I move the other side and shift the joystick, it, wow, it detects Brahma's heads. So Canon's autofocus can even focus on Brahma's multiple heads. So there are different ways to select the autofocus points on this camera. So this is the area selection. So uh, while shooting faces, it's always this, it tracks also. Otherwise you can go to one of the point modes I like using the expanded selection, but for this example, I let me use a single point. So it's selected and then you can actually move the point with a joystick, then press the AF button to get it in focus. It shifts again to the branch, tree, branch, branch, tree. So here, so what else? So, but when you are going to macro mode, I think you should be a little careful. Any lens like this 35mm, now I am using, in macro mode, the, the stress is much higher. So, I would say, be little be careful about it. So, when you are in a normal distance, the autofocus is faster than in the macro distance. When it comes to lenses, of course, this EOS RF system has amazing L series lenses with amazing weather sealing very smooth autofocus performance with uh, the nano USM motors and the lenses are optically very very superior but that said they are expensive too it's value for money but then if a person wants to uh, start with the EOS R system like you want to buy a R5 or R6 which are the lenses you buy if, and if you are tight on budget it's difficult to maintain all the lenses as L series lenses while shooting still it is giving some noise and things like that. But once you go into movie mode, once the AF servo is activated, it is almost noise free. I don't think you will really hear it and it's smooth. And over and above it, both these lenses, 35 and 85 mm, act as one is to two macro lens. Last two days while shooting this wedding, it was really useful to get these ring shots and things like that. How it differs from the L series lenses? First, the build quality. The L series has an amazing build quality. Weather sealing, this doesn't have a weather sealing gasket. This lenses don't come with a hood, but you can always buy an optional hood. I just wish these lenses came with a nano USM motor. This was a thought before I actually took these lenses to the field. But after taking these lenses to the field, I felt that these were actually performing. For the price you pay, the performance you get is amazing. For example, as a wedding photographer, I'd like to have three primes, the 35 for a wide, 50 on normal and 85 for shooting portraits. So how much it will cost? I would say it's about a lakh or probably even less, depending upon the place you buy. You can start with a system of lenses for one lakh. That is phenomenal. I don't think any other system in the market offers this price.
batteries these lp e6 nh batteries i'm telling you they really really last longer in du during the weddings there's hardly a need to change these batteries i shot about more than 1100 pictures and i still had 10% battery remaining and when it comes to video i was able to roll close to 2 hours before the batteries dropped it these are amazing and other than this there are other power options for these two cameras you can power via the usb c uh, with the pd supported charger or a battery so that is one another option you have battery grips another option but these are cameras made small and i like to use in a small way in a portable way and i like to use with these batteries the only problem being these batteries take about two and a half hours to charge from drain to fully charged i wish canon makes some fast charges and usb supported charges i'll be really thankful to canon if they make such a thing just as i said the batteries are amazing we just drained two batteries both in the r5 and r6 at the last event of the day shooting the time lapse of sunset it lasted from sunrise time lapse to sunset time lapse on both the cameras that's amazing battery life last but not least i'd like to uh, point out some of the special functions like intervalometer time lapse in uh, time lapse which can actually record video in the camera at full hd 4k as well as 8k inside the camera itself in r5 that is like amazing uh, it's so user friendly like you just need to set the interval timer and just get it rolling and you have the video with you 8k 4k or fhd so they have a beautiful canon connect app so once connected it, it connects seamlessly once you know how to connect you can connect in a matter of 15 seconds uh, you can shoot both photos and video you can change the formats and you can do a lot of things and that is amazing guys after shooting a wedding after shooting a lot of time lapses after shooting videos today one thing that remains in the head about this camera is easy to use so be the weight it's light easy to carry easy to grip easy to shoot and the menu system not once did i refer to the manual and it's so intuitive just like using an iphone and i think that's the way camera should go you can touch anything on the screen and change that parameter that was amazing for me with this camera you can change the shutter speed iso and you can just slide it and change it so it was so intuitive there's a lot of technicalities like the autofocus and many other things which are taken care of by the camera and anything and everything is easy to change and it's so intuitive that means for a creative filmmaker or a photographer it gives a lot of space for creativity so you can concentrate on your composition you can concentrate on the light and you can concentrate on telling the story so that's what probably canon wants you to do so i really enjoyed using both the cameras thank you canon india for lending me the r5 r6 and five lenses batteries and accessories for doing this review uh, i'm really grateful to canon india for that and if you like this review please subscribe to onbill studios I'll definitely uh, bring more such reviews, more experiential ones than technical ones in future. And if this camera is going to stay with me for some more time, I'm definitely making a short film out of this. I'll soon share with you. See you. Bye.